What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. Um, for starters, I need to figure out a new intro. Um, I've been watching like all these YouTubers and stuff like that, and just I, I always has and always have, and they always have like a they always reintroduce themselves every vlog for those new followers. Um, and I don't have a lot of followers right now, so I know it's it's like the same people watching it, so they know who I am. But just uh, the other day, I was also like, I only had like X amount of followers and I saw that I had like five more and I was like, oh shit, like I didn't really notice this because once I post a video, I don't, I rarely look at the comments or likes or how many people um, have seen it or anything like that. Um, primarily because right now I'm just doing it for myself, just like document what I'm doing on this car. Um, then obviously everything else, but obviously primary videos are just about the Chevelle. So, um, yeah, I need to figure that out, just how I'm gonna be like, okay, hey, my name is Matthew, back at it, this is what the vlog's about, follow me on Instagram, stuff like that. Still thinking about it. But anyways, today's vlog's gonna be specifically about how I wired up an accessory fuse box, like I said, for all my accessories. Um, before, um, I'll actually just show you. I was using the Chevelle has this factory fuse box and then it comes with three options it comes with battery ignition and accessory so if I had an accessory I'll route it to the accessory one and then if I had another accessory I'll just use like a I don't know what it's called but it's like a little like a little T clamp thing where I'm able to put another wire in it so all the power is coming off of that one wire for all my accessories and going through that one fuse. So being that I installed the stereo, um, stereo, all those gauges right there. Um, and what else did I install? The vacuum. And then eventually uh, I want to do like a custom center console. I'm going to put, um, uh, more lights on there so then they gotta wire up those lights um and just all that i was like that's that's too much coming off of one wire um before i was able to handle it with the small amount of stuff i had um and then this way with the accessory um fuse box i'm able to like if something goes out i could pinpoint exactly what's going out and if all of them go out then i know it's the fuse box itself um and it'll be a lot more easier because i did so Let's get into it. I have one installed right now, and I think it's for the ignition. <clears throat> Which is this little guy. Sorry. It's kind of hard to see from this angle. I'm trying to get in here. So I've got this little fuse box right here. Got it off of Amazon. Um, super cheap. I think it was like 30 bucks or something like that. Less. Anyways, it comes with... I think six ports. Yeah, one, two, three, and then one, two, three on this side. It comes like all these little labels you can put on this clear plastic part and you can label it like whatever you want, depending on what it is. They come with like pre labels and it also comes with blank labels. Um, pre labels like gauges, battery, a um, whole bunch of weird shit. Um, so yeah, got this right here, and then I got this little relay. So all this together, I don't know, I'm guessing like 50 bucks. Maybe, and there's like five of these in this package. Um, less than 50 bucks, had maybe with 50 bucks for shipping. But I got it on Amazon, like I said, super cheap. Cool, so, this is how we wire it. So first things first, you wanna figure out where you wanna install this. So I installed this on this heater core, or this heater box, whatever it is, and I plan to install two more. Um, but I just wanted to test out one to see if it works. Sorry, I'm using double-sided tape, place this right here, double sided tape to place that right there. And this is exactly how I wired it up. So, everything's gonna come off this fuse right here. So this fuse, um, I was looking at the ratings for it, I think it actually says on here, I think it's like 30 amps or whatever. It was more than enough for what I needed it for as of right now. Um, I thought it was gonna be a lot bigger, this thing's really small, but it, it works. Cool, so, there's gonna be four connections to that. Yeah, so there's yeah, one right here, two, and then one on the other side of this middle one, and then this further side one. So one's gonna go straight to 
the fuse box. So this is the power side. So this is this fuse box right here. This is what gives it all the power. So wired it up to the appropriate location and it gives you instructions. Um, it comes with this fuse box comes with instructions and you just read those and you're gonna know exactly which wire goes where. So this one goes to the fuse box. Right here. The second one. Let's see. This second one goes to the main fuse box. So we see we have three connections, like I said, it one's ignition, um, accessory, and battery. Um, so mine's running off. So this one's specifically for the accessory. I am going to get one for the ignition, and I'll tell you why in a bit. But what we're using this wire for is this like a switch. So whenever the car turns on in either accessory or when the car is actually running, keep in mind, accessory always turns off when you're cranking the car. So when the car is running or when you put it in accessory mode, that turns on. So if you have a, I don't know, a gauge light connected to that and you wanted to read whatever that gauge was for or some lights, whatever it is, once you put it in accessory mode, that will turn on. So in this case, since we have it hooked up to this relay, what it does, it says, it's now it's a switch. So like, hey, once that turns off, this is like, okay, it's the switch is on, if you will. Now this has power. So then, now it switches the power on to this box. So we have fuse box. We have, so this is a factory fuse box that I just showed you guys over there. That's the switch wire telling this relay to turn on and push power through. I have the fuse that goes here. Or not the fuse, but the wire that goes to the fuse box. And then I have this wire. Now this wire goes directly to the battery. So let me show you guys that really quick. So here's the battery. But instead of wiring it up all the way to the battery, there is this little distributor point right here that um, this power wire goes directly to the battery. And I was like, I don't want to route this wire all the way to the battery. I just connect it to this point, which that wire touches. So this is basically the battery. So wire it up, moved it all the way through. You can see it moved it right there and then just found the nearest hole right there. So you have that connected to the battery. And then you have the ground wire. This guy I grounded. There's a metal um, bracket somewhere up here with the bolt on it. I just use that. You can find any metal point, um, any metal point under the dash and drill a hole through it, put that wire on it, and boom, there's your ground. Then, now that that's working, and this is great because, like I said, it, you have fuses for each individual wire. Um, this few, the fuse box manufacturer um, recommends using a larger power wire, but this is the largest I had. I think it's a 14 gauge. I think they want you to use an 8 just so it gets more reliable power. Um, but this is working well for me right now. And then I have three accessories now connected to it. I have my gauges. I think my gauges are all going through one just because they're small and they don't use a lot of power. Uh, I have my gauges, I have the stereo, and then I have vacuum pump for the brakes. That's pretty much all you need to do to route this. The most complicated part on routing this was figuring out which wires go to which on this guy right here. Which wires go where? I think this is gonna be the most complicated thing for you guys. Um, if it's not great, but hey, it was for me. Um, I figured it out because Amazon had like more detailed photos and I looked at those photos. Um, but if you, if you guys get similar ones to this, look at that instructions right there. It, this pretty much tells you, but if you don't know like what those logos mean, not logos, but those symbols mean, then you're probably gonna have a good time or a bad time. Um, but like I said, here's a ground that grounds this guy. 
this goes directly to the fuse box, uh, the factory fuse box. This wire right here goes to this fuse box. This is giving it power and this is power from the battery. So technically this is a hot wire right now. This has power to it. But since the fuse box over oh, the factory fuse box isn't on, there's a switch in here that tells it that opens up. And it's like, nope, you can't the electricity can't pass through um, until that turns on. So once I put the car in accessory mode, that switch <laughs> flips closed or closes however you want to say it, closes up, allowing the power to go through and then it goes through to this fuse box. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how I wired it up. Um, I do have, like I said, that's just for the accessories. Unfortunately, I do have the vacuum pump on that, which means every time I put the car in accessory mode, it's always, it runs. So once, so I wouldn't be able to go to like the drive, the, uh, yeah, the drive-ins and like turn on the radio because then you'll hear the vacuum pump run. Um, and my vacuum pump would run for like five seconds and then stop. Um, but over time it might leak a little bit and then it will kick on again. Then that's just going to drain the battery that much more. Um, so I'm going to do one for the ignition, route it up the same way. going to route it up. I'm going to have a box on this side right next to it with another relay, relay to the battery, relay to the factory fuse box on the ignition side, relay to the um, actual fuse box and then a ground relay to the ground. Um, and then obviously that's wired up. It's good to go. And then from there, I'm going to put, I'm going to wire up the coil and the actual motor to that ignition because I do have it in the ignition port right now. And I didn't want to put the, the vacuum and the ignition running together. Um, I just wanted them separate. So that were to fuck up, then boom, I don't have brakes, nor do I have fucking ignition. So yeah, um, going to do that. And then I'll have them individually. Keep in mind the ignition only works when the car is on or when it's being cranked, um, which is perfect. So then I can go to the drive-ins with this car. I can put on the stereo um, and not worry about the brakes going, uh, the brake booster constantly turning on and whatnot. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward. Great thing to do if you're going to have all these accessories and whatnot. Um, it, it took me the longest time to find um, a video out there that showed how to put an external fuse box. I went on all the forums and um, I still didn't get it. I'm more of a visual person. Um, but they were telling me I needed like a trigger wire, which is the trigger wire would go from the fuse box to the other relay. That's your trigger wire. That's the flip switch. That's what, hey, it turns on, turn on the fuse box now. Um, and I got that. I actually got that when. I um, started wiring everything up. I was like, okay, this is what this is for. Did some YouTube videos. There's some helpful people out there, but they're doing it on different cars. I didn't know how to, with different fuse boxes, not really with like classic cars and the fuse box we have. Um, some guy did like a little diagram and that diagram did help. It was like a visual representation of what this was gonna do. Um, so I kept that in mind when I was wiring this up. But yeah, that's how you install accessory fuse box. Um, it's going to be very helpful. Definitely recommend doing it. Go on Amazon. Doesn't cost a lot of money. Um, and yeah, you have all your accessories separate. You have individual fuses. You know when something breaks, what it is. Um, and then you take it there. Just keep in mind, use, try to use a thicker wire for that power wire. And then you'll be good to go. Till next time.